Hello again, loyal YouTube viewers. I know the week has come and gone by, and today we're, fo we're finally going to talk about the big one. No, not the Balrog from Toy Story. I'm talking about Lonzo from Toy Story 3. Just like Syndrome from The Incredibles and Miles and Axelrod from Cars 2, Lonzo has gone down in history as one of the most vicious films Pixar ever created because... They are among the most seriously evil antagonists out there. A complete monster, the most heinous character played completely seriously with no redeeming or altruistic qualities. Lotso is way worse than an evil banana who he's not just an e Lotso is not just an evil banana who smells like strawberries, who acts like a friendly grandfatherly figure. He's one of the he's one of the most evil villains you can get in a G-rated movie because he allowed he allowed Andy's toys to be beaten up by this awful, gross uh, children from the caterpillar room in the Sunnyside Dink here. And he reset Buzz Lightyear's mind to get him to beat up the other toys. And then he let them and then he let them die in the incinerator after Woody and Buzz risked their lives to save him from the thing before the incinerator that chops up the garbage. The reason why I bring this up is because, uh, well, I've noticed in in some cases, like, uh, like in Mr. Enter's animated atrocity of Peter Asmint, you know, he really gets, or or the Friendship's Magic episode One Bad Apple, he really gets annoyed when uh, when a story tries to make a villain sympathetic after. We spent the whole story rooting against them because some writers don't really seem to understand that you can't just uh, you can't just uh, make a person sympathetic by giving them a tragic backstory. I mean, sometimes it uh, sometimes it gives a morally justified reason for their actions when you come to feel bad for them, but uh, you know, not this time. And that's also the real reason why, that's also why he took umbrage with the French Biz Magic episodes, Crusaders of Lost Mark, and the Cutie Remark when he, he shared us his thoughts on Season 5. Because he knows you can't redeem everything Diamond Tiara and Starlight Glimmer did in one episode, and you know, even Crusaders All Sox writer Amy Keating Rogers. Herself knew that, and knew she wasn't really trying to do that. When I asked her about that at the at the 2017 BronyCon, so um, you know, I'm happy that uh, Amy Keating Rogers is a writer who's willing to take a little criticism every now and then. That brings me back to my main topic of Toy Story 3. I really respect Toy Story 3 because, uh, much like that video I made the previous week with, uh, with Buddy Pine, who wanted to be an Incredible Boy and then later became Syndrome after Mr. Incredible wouldn't let him be a sidekick, a hero support, because all Incredible Boy slash Buddy did was make things worse. And he had such a big ego that uh, he tried to vanquish all the superheroes and be the last one standing by beating his tenth and final Omnidroid as Syndrome. Toy Story 3, like The Incredibles, 
also understood how to uh, how to give a villain relatable motives and a tragic origin story without making them appear sympathetic. In fact, uh, one of the biggest complaints by test audiences against Toy Story 3 was that Lotso was too sympathetic originally. I wasn't one of the test audiences, but when I saw Toy Story 3 in theaters, I too was probably as disappointed as those test audiences when Lotso didn't push the emergency shutdown button that would have saved Andy's toys from falling into the incinerator. But fortunately, uh, Toy Story 3's writers had a, a backup plan for that so that uh, it wouldn't seem uh, particularly jarring when Lotso is still an irredeemable monster in the climax of the film. That's when they added in this new part where after after Alonso found out that Daisy replaced him but probably didn't also replace Big Baby or Chuckles. He goes rogue and uh, and uh and lies to them that and says they should leave. That was very mean and nasty when he lied to Big Baby and told him that uh, Daisy didn't love him anymore. That was very sad. And Woody calls lots of out on this later. Sometimes a Freudian excuse is no excuse. After Lotso said, she replaced us, Woody said, she replaced you. And if you couldn't have her, then no one could. You lied to Big Baby, and you've been lying ever since. She loved you, Lotso, as much as any kid ever loved a toy. So, you, know, you better take notes from The Incredibles and Toy Story 3. If you want your villain to be seriously evil, if you really want your viewers to hate them, then... Yes, it is possible to give them a tragic backstory and still have them be unsympathetic at the same time. You think you can't uh, eat your cake and have it too, but in this case, you can. You know, much like the bugs like from Millennial, Toy Story 3 also, Toy Story 3 was also important to me because it marked an important milestone in my life. Toy Story 3 is about Andy going to college and uh, giving his toys away to Bonnie Anderson. But, uh, well, I wasn't going to college back in that time, but that was the summer where I was headed from elementary school to middle school. And when Monsters U came out, that's the time when I was headed from middle school to high school. Now, uh, thank you for watching this video, and before we go, I would like to sing an excerpt from a Bugs Life's Cret song, which, uh, I, uh, wish I had done in my, uh, earlier video about Molt. But, I think it's here. After, uh, you know what I told you about, you know, when I watched, uh, Toy Story 2 and Monsters U in theaters, where I, where it was in my life at the time. <clears throat> You may only go round one time. I'm sorry. <clears throat> we may only go round one time. As far as I can tell, it's the time of your life. So live it well. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. We got one more next week, and it's really going to fit with the theme of Halloween. So long.